Welcome to The Mischief, I'm Valen and this is Crucial 2, the refresh update. I'll be pack prospecting this mod pack for you, so let's dig in. Crucial 2, the refresh update is a true vanilla plus pack, but can also be used as a conversion mod pack that takes a vanilla player and shows them a little at a time about the wonders of modded Minecraft while keeping it interesting with options for all levels, the modded experience too. Talking about themes of this pack, there is really only one, and that is it is a very strong Vanilla Plus mod pack. Yes, it is vanilla themed, it does not go overboard on any aspect that I've been able to tell, and it executes it quite well. Going over the style or focus of the pack, well, it's really open plan. You can do pretty much whatever you like. There's no forced requirements. It does have a lot of guidance options, though. Starting with achievements, you do have plenty there, but there is quite a difference, and most vanilla players would probably notice it, with the change of the quest book, replacing the vanilla recipe book. Clicking on this will give you an introduction to the mod pack itself, as well as a lot of different things that have changed in it from vanilla. Making it kind of a teaching pack, it will definitely bring you from vanilla into a modded atmosphere and kind of guide you along your way. It does have suggestions on things that you could learn or explore, but it doesn't have any requirements. It also doesn't try to spoil too much and offers you some suggestions and things that you might be able to discover yourselves. Let's talk about the weight of this mod pack. It falls into the potato category. Uh, you could run this with a really low system, uh, if only because it was specifically designed to be run on a low system. Now you might also need to tweak it a little bit. It does have some recommendations for running it with 3 gigs, but it does say that it can run very well with just 2 gigs of RAM. It's got a very fast load time. It also has a server pack, so you can add that to your server and play with friends. It's very stable as far as I've been able to tell. There's a little bit of some stuttering in the nether, but uh, otherwise it seems to be really solid. As for popularity, this is probably going to be pretty high up there, but not first page. It's in fact on page 10 if I go through the overall popularity at the time of this video, with 26,000 downloads. Is the author of note? Why definitely yes. This is Vazki, the mod author of such mods as Batania, Quark, Psy, and also probably did a little bit of uh, work with some other devs as well to try and make this really work. Let's talk about the world gen. Now, it does have, of course, the vanilla biomes in there, but it also has some vanilla plus ones. If you're not familiar with the abnormals mods, it adds in quite a few extras in there that aren't too far from the vanilla experience, each with their own little tiny hidden pluses and minuses for you to discover. So there are definitely some really interesting new biomes to explore, but not just biomes. There are also some new structures out there for you to be aware of, as well as beware of. Now let's talk about the difficulty of this pack. There isn't a lot in it because it is so vanilla plus. One would think that the grind is going to be part of it, but actually because it has some of the modded stuff in there, it does have some new ways of obtaining and getting things. In fact, they're probably a little bit easier. It's just going to be the difficulty is finding stuff or learning things, which the guidebook really does help you to discover a lot of this stuff, as well as the achievements that are in there. So I'd have to say it's mostly the same for any mod pack, and that is just learning the boundaries of the mod pack itself. Now let's talk about mobs. In here you've got your vanilla mobs, and you've got your vanilla plus mobs, meaning we've got new animals because Alex's mobs is in here, which brings in a whole slew of peaceful, neutral, and dangerous mobs. But then there's others as well, even to go so far as to say that there are mini bosses and bosses involved. The dimensions pretty much just consist of the vanilla experience with the overworld, the nether, and the end each one having slightly upgraded with some new experiences and creatures. Going through your tool and or armor progression, it's pretty much standard vanilla stuff, but there are some new items, none of which are made from any new ore variants or anything like that. Instead, they're made either as mob drops or finding things as loot. They don't really overpower anything, they just give you a few different options, some of which are just aesthetic. Let's go over your building options. Now, this being a vanilla plus pack, 
Uh, it actually only has your vanilla options plus a few quark options in there which you know you can place below or near blocks and lock rotations as well as use the trowel but uh, there isn't a lot as far as building mods involved in this but there is a ton of variant blocks for you to choose from so you do have still the vanilla building experience for the most part. Going over the inventory options this is actually a little bit different from your standard selection You've got your vanilla chests, of course, but there's also the Quark Oddities backpack, which replaces a chest plate. So it is kind of a trade-off if you want armor or not, but it does give you an entire new inventory section. Besides that, there are some upgrades for some blocks, as well as creatures that can carry things for you, and they're pretty darn good at it, too. All right, now let's talk about maps. This one is a little bit different. You've got your vanilla setup, of course, but you also have a couple different compasses that you can choose. But most importantly, there's Antique Atlas. This definitely makes it a little bit nicer for those that don't just want a vanilla experience that has extra stuff in it, but they also want a little bit of that modded experience. You don't have to use it, but just by having it in your offhand makes it really helpful to kind of get around. You can, of course, put pins and things on there so you can mark it as you need to. It works in multiple dimensions, and it's just kind of immersive. So going over multiplayer, is there any kind of anti-griefing mechanic? Not really. Uh, it's fairly vanilla as far as that goes. There may be something like a safe that you can use and lock against other players, but there's not much else. But then again, there's plenty more that's good in this pack. The mod overlap? There isn't any that I've been able to find. Are there any special requirements that you need to have this pack look and perform the way that it's advertised? Not that I'm able to tell. Uh, you do not need Optifine. In fact, if you use Optifine, you're probably going to have a tough time with it and it may even crash. Do you need any special exterior resources or texture packs? No, you're all set to go. Let's go over the death mechanic. Well, in this one, your items, when you die the first time, is saved once in a totem of holding. By punching it, you get your items back, if you can get to it. If you die a second time, that totem explodes and all your stuff will land on the ground, creating a new totem if you had anything in your inventory when you died the second time. Now, sometimes you're really far away, though, when you die and you have no idea where your death was, because there isn't any kind of waypoint option. That's what your death compass is for. You can craft one of these, but make sure that you go back in well prepared so that you can get your stuff without creating more deaths. All right, and here's where I go over a lot of the features of the pack, things of note. I've mentioned it before, but Antique Atlas, I find pretty much invaluable, especially when you're using it for something like Waystones, which is also in here, mostly at the top of Wild Towers, but you cannot craft them or use Warp Stones. You are only allowed to use the Wild Towers themselves to teleport around. Now, if you do find one of these, you should find Paraglider at the top, which you can use to then slowly glide down any kind of damaging drop that you might have, provided you have it in your hand. Pressing the N key will give you a notes option. You can actually type your own notes and save things so that you know where the heck you left off last time when you had to run away and go eat dinner. Golem farms are a thing of the past. There's now tortoise farms, which you'll have to harvest those with one of two methods. Raids are different. In order to start one, you now need to get one of the banners from the pillagers. By setting it down, clicking it, and lighting it on fire, you then get the debuff you'll need to enter a village and start the raid. But be aware, this can now include mini-bosses, which can make it even more challenging than it was before, but also more rewarding. There are a few key recipe changes that makes the game completely different and a little bit more interesting. There's also some big changes to the enchanting mechanic, which is matrix enchanting, another part of quark oddities which is in there. Takes a little bit of getting used to, but it's really interesting and definitely more fun. There's also a spyglass. You can chain boats and carts together and have them transport little trains of, well, whatever you like. Villagers will now follow emerald blocks. There's actually auto crafting in here. And of course, you've got your beasts of burden, which you can use to carry your stuff, should you desire it. And then if you just really want to get around fast, well, you've got your fantastical creatures that can do that for you. And they're two-seaters as well. 
The underground also uses a lot of Young's items in there, so exploring in the caves underground is a lot more interesting, and you're less likely to try and do just a whole bunch of strip mining. And something that is only briefly mentioned at the very bottom of the CurseForge page, this has Create Compat, so if you want to upgrade this mod pack a little bit further with something a little bit more modded, but still keep somewhat of a vanilla feel, then you can add in Create and the Flywheel mods and add in a whole new source of automation and interest. But that's up to you to add in, as it's not set up that way by default. Now if I were to try and go over something that this mod pack might be missing or is in need of, um, well, if you really want to, it would probably be that it's missing a lot of any kind of advanced modded feel to it, but it, it is a vanilla plus pack, so that's not really a strike against it or anything. It's just that you won't get any of the really strong magic or really strong tech mods out of this setup. And some people might not care for the Antique Atlas. A better map mod might be in order, but then again, that also reveals way too much and can make the pack go way faster than it should. It, it's actually set up quite well as is. The only other thing I could think of would be perhaps some better simple way of adding in some kind of storage, but there isn't a lot of new blocks added in, in here. It's mostly just decoration, and you don't need much more than better vanilla chests for that, and well, that's already in here. I can't really knock too much about this stuff. It seems to be a pretty solid pack. It's high quality is what it is set up for, and that is what I am finding. So is it a unique pack? Yes. It's very vanilla feeling with constant new wonders to discover as you explore, no shocking differences, and made with quality in mind. And once again, I feel it's a great vanilla to modded conversion pack if ever you wanted to try. So if you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give a like, comment, subscribe, come visit us on Twitch, don't be afraid to click that notification bell on either platform, and as always, help us spread the mischief. Till next time folks, I'll see ya.